grace and peace. Our God is great. Our God is big. Uh, you know, I, th there is some music that I certainly that is on my heart that I certainly would, would love to have uh, played tonight. Uh, but because of all of the uh, new regulations that are that are taking place uh, in with uh, with the social media platforms and all there, there are there are all kinds of new regulations and stipulations that uh, that have been put in place. And so I, you know, I didn't have the opportunity to get clearance and, um, you know, for those particular for the particular song that's in my heart. And uh, we run. If I just went on ahead and played it. Give me a second here. I run the risk of having the, the, the this broadcast shut down. So we're not going to we're not going to play it. But I want to say, well, you know what? They can't shut me down. I can say this: Our God is big, so strong and mighty, and His plan for me and you is victory, 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 victory. Our God is big, so strong and mighty, and his plan for me is victory, 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 victory. Listen, there's nothing my God cannot do. Saints, there's nothing our God cannot do. Right where you are, just say that. There's nothing my God cannot do. Come on, make it personal. There's nothing my God cannot do. Let me go back to the top, my God. Is big, so strong and mighty. And his plan, plan for me, is victory, victory, victory. That's my mother-in-law, don't mind. My God, you're on broadcast, Ma, is me, really? so strong <laughs> and mighty. And his plans for me. <laughs> <laughs> is victory, victory. She's just washing the dishes, don't worry. Said there's nothing my God cannot do. Honey, it's okay, honey. There's nothing my God cannot do. There's, honey, she get some water. There's nothing my God cannot do. Oh, there's nothing my God cannot do. Oh, so guess what? Victory, I've got it. I thank God, I've got it. Oh, victory, I got it. I thank God, I've got it. Oh, victory, I've got it. I thank God, I've got it. Oh, victory, I've got it. I thank God, I've got it. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, get thee behind. Oh, victory today is mine. I've got it. Hey, I thank God I've got it. Victory, I've got it. I thank God I've got it. Hey, victory, I've got it. I thank God I've got it. Oh, victory, I've got it. I thank God I've got it. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming love. Oh, he loved me before I knew him and all my love is due him. He brought me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I got it. I thank God I got it. Hey, I've got it. Hey, I thank God I've got it. Whoa, victory. I've got it. Hey, I thank God. Hey, hey, victory. I've got it. I thank God I've got it. Listen, there's nothing my God cannot do. 
Oh, there's nothing my God cannot do. No, no, no. There's nothing my God cannot do. One last time, I'm telling you, there's nothing my God cannot do. Nothing. Nothing. And on that note, I'm going to tell you this. Even if God chooses not to move in the way that we pray that he would, we can confidently be sure that he is absolutely working things out for our good. And guess what? He can. He can. All right. I want to jump into this word. I'm so excited about this moment in time. And uh, even though uh, 2020 has been the type of year that it has been for so many people, it's been an absolutely horrendous and hard year for a lot of people. Uh, that's not everybody's testimony. And certainly I, I, I dare not uh, get on here and be insensitive to uh, those who have in, endured, encountered uh, some very, very tumultuous times during this 365 day cycle. And I think the irony of it is the fact that there was so much anticipation, so much anticipation. You know what, I'm gonna say this. I'm seeing some comments coming through and I want to acknowledge you, Daphne Hall. You, you, you know what, you are just blessing me to life. You're blessing me to life. I receive that and all of you who are uh, giving comments. God bless you. And when this broadcast is over, I absolutely will uh, cor correspond with you. But what I want to say is that I know that this has been a season of, of, of just utter chaos in, 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 in all of our lives to some extent or, or, or another. Uh, but I want to encourage us today, and this is what the word tonight is about. God, I believe, is wanting to caution all of us, we who are of the household of faith, we who are of the kingdom of God, we who are the children of the most high God, we who are the sheep of his pasture, we must not take our cues from the world. And, and, and I'm going to say this too, in not taking our cues from the world, it is absolutely going to be critical that we guard the speech of our mouths, not only the speech of our mouths, but the thoughts of our minds. And when thoughts begin to uh, want to take the throne of our, of, of our imagination, of our thoughts, this is why the Bible has give us for, given us formidable, mighty, strong, powerful weapons of warfare that are not carnal, but they are mighty, not through intellect, not through ability, not through cognitive faculty, but they are mighty through God. It's not based on philosophical jargon. It's not based on ideology. It is based on the strength, the might, and undwindling, unfailing power of God. That is the kind of weaponry that we have. And God has given us these weapons so that we can do what? Two things in particular so that we could pull down strongholds and cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring those thoughts, those, 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 those perceptions, those per perspectives, those points of view, bring them into captivity and make them obey God. So if all of the thoughts that are pervading your mind, that are dominating your heart, that is that is pierced, that are piercing your soul, that if, if they are communicating to you fear and defeat and, and, and worry and doubt and concern and trepidation and anxiety, you have to use the weapons of warfare to 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 change the narrative. And when you change the narrative, uh, according to the word of God, with the weapons that God gives us, guess what the weapons that God give us? Then guess what? Your changing of the narrative doesn't cause it to be uh, alternative facts. It causes it to be present truth. It is the truth. 
We have the power to use, to engage, to employ the word of God. This is not just jargon. These are not just talking points. These are not just sound bites, but these are, I'm telling you, it, it, isn't it interesting that in the scripture, and I'm not even in my teaching yet, but I'm gonna shave all of this off of my time. Hallelujah, I believe that this is exhorting, ex exhorting and edifying uh, somebody. Hallelujah, praise God. Isn't it interesting that when the Bible makes reference to the word of God, it uses some very, very, very uh, uh, specific uh, examples. It likens the word of God in the book of Jeremiah to a hammer. It likens the word of God to fire. In the book of Hebrews, it likens the word of God unto a two-edged sword, a double-bladed, a double-edged sword. So when we talk about the word of God, these are not just lying and fluffy and flowery and poetic or articulate verbiage, which, which it does have those attributes as well. But I want us today, I believe in the context of what God is wanting to get through to us in this calendar moment that we're in, in all of what's going on, in all of the vitriol. I mean, we are, we, we are in such a, a, a vicious a political uh, a season cycle still, still, even though the election was November the 3rd, there is still a lot of uh, just, just, just animus that is, that is, that is at an all time high. And I'm telling you, people of God, people of God, we need to opt out of all of that energy. And we're, and, and, and what I believe that, that the Lord wants us to uh, really focus on and dial into tonight is the fear of the Lord, okay? And that is that is our topic tonight, fear the Lord, okay? And we're gonna, we, we, it, it, is, it is a directive, it is a mandate, it is a, it is a command, fear the Lord, okay? I'm talking about the fear of the Lord and I'm telling us tonight, and what I'm saying to you, I promise you, I am the first partaker of this, I believe that this is a pertinent word. I believe that, that this is a relevant word. I believe that this is a timely word. It is a word of direction. <clears throat> it is a word of correction. It is a word of instruction because so much intel, so much information is coming our way that is affecting how we feel, how we think, how we choose, how we decide the moves we make or moves we don't make. But God is saying unto us, fear the Lord. Now, I want to give uh, an accurate context because one of the most misconstrued uh, uh, perspectives that 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 and, and directives that have that have that has been given in the Word of God is this ideal of fearing the Lord. Now, many times, and, and so we're going to our principal scripture tonight is coming from Joshua, the twenty fourth chapter. Verses 14 through 15. Joshua 24, verses 14 through 15. And the scripture reads as thus Now, immediately, presently, currently, now, therefore, fear the Lord. I want to I want to repeat that. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Now, read it again. Now fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the other gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. Verse 15, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve whether the gods of your fathers, I'm sorry, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This is a resolve. This is a disposition. This is a decision. This is a determination that we are being uh, admonished and encouraged to make tonight to fear the Lord, to serve the Lord and serve him 
only. Now, what I love about this is when God is prophetically speaking through his man servant and he's giving this directive, look, he says, choose, make a choice. Either it's going to be God or it's going to be the gods, small g, which your father served on the other side of the flood or in Egypt, in your previous situation, in your previous reality, okay? Either we're going to serve our God, the one true living, the only God, the Lord God strong and mighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or we're going to serve the God of the economy. We're going to serve the God of, of the government. We're going to serve the God of all of our fears, of all of our concerns. Anything that you allow to 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 uh, to to have your affections and your attention and your uh, submission and your surrender to be beholding to that becomes a god. It could be it could be anything. Idolatry is all about giving a, a, a godship to anything other than God. Okay. And so with all of the of all of the bad news and all of the uncertainty and all of the upheaval that we're currently in, there are so many things. I say this all of the time, but it bears repeating. There are so many things that are competing for our affection, for our affinity, for our trust, for our confidence. We it's so easy because Though we are spirit, we do live in a body and we possess souls and our souls are affected by what is going on in this temporal, uh, this temporal, temporal world that we're living in. And all of the events of the day, all of the news of the day, the news feed, the news cycle, the breaking news, the emails, the the, all of the all of the way that uh, that that information is is coming at us, it literally takes a toll on our souls. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> That's okay. That's my sister-in-law. <laughs> hey, it's a family affair. <laughs> Praise God. But listen, it takes a toll on our souls. But guess what? When you have made the decision, ah, when you have made the choice that I am going to fear the Lord, I'm not going to fear any other authority. I'm not going to fear any other philosophy. I'm not going to fear any other point of view, any other ideology. Now, let's be clear. When we talk about fear the Lord, God has never invited his people or admonished his children to fear him in the context of being frightened by him, intimidated by him, or fearful or afraid of him. That is not the context of fear the Lord. I want to say it again. That is not the context of fearing the Lord. And it is very critical and it is very important that we make this pivotal shift from seeing uh, uh, the fear of the Lord from being something that incites uh, intimidation and uncomfortableness and uneasiness. And, and, and it, 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 listen, that is an unhealthy narcissistic perspective. God is so secure in who he is. God knows who he is. God is so comfortable and confident in his godness that he doesn't need your intimidation to validate his strength, his mind, and power. God has never, ever, ever manipulated his godness by, 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 by way of making us be shaking in our boots as it pertains to our relationship with him. That is not consistent with the scripture, not as children, not as people. When the Bible talks about fear, the fear of the Lord, when he talks about fearing God as he is here in this uh, Joshua 24th chapter, when he says, now therefore fear the Lord, he is talking about having a deference to God. By deference, we mean what? a humble submission and respect. We are talking about, when we say fear the Lord, we're talking about uh, bowing down to God. 
We're talking about considering God to be superior, considering God to be formidable. When we say fear the Lord, we're talking about, I'm give, I want to give you context and I want to give you definition and I want to give you clarity tonight because this is a position and a disposition that each and every one of us must possess, must maintain, must assume in order for us to, ex to uh, experience what God intends for us to experience in all of these uncertain times. And when we look in the word of God, uncertainty, the, the tumultuous times, it's not a new thing in the earth. From the beginning of time, from the very literal Genesis, beginning of time, the earth was in upheaval. It was without form. It was void. Darkness was upon the face of the earth. Are you hearing me? So, you know, in the days of, 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 of Pharaoh and the children of Israel, in the days of the Amorites and the Hittites and the children of Israel going through the wilderness and all of those battles, and you fast forward even into the New Testament, and there were battles and struggles and changes and challenges and problems and issues and circumstances that were always adverse. But God has always been a faithful God to show himself strong on behalf of his people. So this is why we must become fortified, fortified in this understanding of the fear of the Lord. Because when we talk about the fear of the Lord, I'm going to say it again. God is not, uh, he is not manipulating uh, intimidation. He's saying, I want you to fear the Lord in this wise, to surrender one's will and resistance to, to adjust one's attitude, actions, and, ad and, and activities to. It's like, you know, it's like, when you see the blue lights, you're driving down the highway, the street or wherever you're 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 operating a motor vehicle and those blue lights come on behind you. Now, now that does incite. It does cause a fear. It does cause a, a, a dis discomfort. But ultimately what it does is it provokes a response. See, when we talk about the fear of the Lord, we're talking about the evoking, the inciting. The, the, uh, of, of a response. What is the response? When you see those blue lights, you stop what you're doing. I don't care how urgent of a pursuit you were in prior to those blue lights coming on. That becomes a moot point. If you are a law abiding citizen, if you are not lawless, when you see those lights come on, Everything that you were in the process and in progress of doing, it comes to a screeching halt and you immediately give all of your attention, all of your affection, all of your focus over to submitting to those lights, submitting to the authority that is that, that those lights are announcing. Or it's like when you hear the blaring siren of an ambulance or a fire truck, it immediately arrests your actions. It captures your attention from whatever you were previously occupied by and causes your activities to shift into a mode that is solely compliant with and complicit to the demands and protocols that that siren represents. Why? Because you defer that's what deference is. That's what humble submission looks like. We need to know what these words mean, and then we need to know what the call to action is. When God is saying, fear the Lord, God is saying, I want you to defer to me. God is saying that I want you to give me the reverential respect. I want you to highly regard me. I want you to regard me above any other authority, any other power, any other influence, any other, any other other uh, 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 official that God is is the ultimate power, and so uh, and so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when what what we're doing, but when we hear those audible uh, sounds of a siren, or we see the visible presence of those of, of red lights, blue lights, whatever color they may be, our behavior is modified immediately immediately. And this is what fearing the Lord is all about. God is calling us to make immediate about faces. Are you hearing me? So should it be as it pertains to this context and mandate to fear the Lord. So often this is misconstrued. So, you know, I could, as I was pondering this message tonight, my mind went back uh, uh, over 40 years ago 
as a kid growing up in the Southeast. In the Southeast, we had very, 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 very uh, uh, violent thunderstorms. As a matter of fact, where, where, where I grew up, we had an entire season that was known as hurricane season. But, but all throughout the year, at any given moment, we could have a very uh, violent and volatile uh, thunderstorm. And sometimes the thunder was so boisterous that the sound of the thunder was so blaring. The sound of the thunder was so booming that sometimes the vibrations could literally cause the windows in the house to shake. It would cause, you could feel the motion and the movement, the sound. And then our elders, because I grew up with seniors, I grew up with grandmother, grandfather, great grandmother, grand aunt. I grew up in a time, I thank God for my upbringing where really, it really was a village. And 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 the, 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 this misconstrued uh, perspective, definition, and understanding of the fear of the Lord was reinforced. So when the, when the thunder would start, they would tell us as kids, y'all sit down and be quiet. We were forbidden to, to have any movement. We had to go sit down somewhere and be quiet. We could not even talk among ourselves. We had to be quiet because you know what they told us? God is talking. This is God talking. So here it is. This, 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 this uh, intimidating fear, uncomfortable perspective of the presence of God, of the person of God, is it, it was, was, was constantly being reinforced. Now, I love my elders. I love my seniors. They were, they were wonderful. My life is the better because of having their influence in my life. So I'm not saying anything to disrespect or dishonor them. They, they, they taught us what they were taught. They, when you, but when you know better, you do better. Is that all right? Yes, yes, yes. I give anything anything to have them in my life presently, today. Yes, yes, yes. And I would do anything that I needed to do to take care of them if that were the case. So I want to be clear. No diss, no dig, no shade to my elders. They were absolutely wonderful people. But, but, but traditions of men, superstitions, these things were passed down to them. And so they passed them down to us. And so we have a reinforced inaccurate perspective of the fear of the Lord. We, we People really believe that God wants us, his children, his people to be afraid of him. But when the scriptures are talking to the people of God, the children of God, the household of faith, citizens of the kingdom of God, when the directive, when the mandate, when the command, when the instruction to fear the Lord comes to us, God does not mean fear, fright, or afraidness, or, 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 or intimidation, or to be uncomfortably ruffled in your emotions by the very mention of his person, like it is with the thunder, no ma'am and no sir. But 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 God, when he when we talk about fear, he wants us to have such a respect of him, such a high regard of him that we revere him so much that we then move into an experiential and a relational construct with God that he's not. The, 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 the God that we are afraid of, but he's the God that we are affectionate with, that we have been accepted in the beloved, that he loves us, that he affirms us, that he's concerned about us, that he is taking, uh, he's taking an interest and concern in whatever it is that is concerning us. That is what, so what God is, he's wanting to move us, his people, his children, the sheep of his pasture, out of a perspective of a punitive, penalizing God to the paternal, patriarchal God. This is why so many of us have father issues. We cannot even see God, the father God. Don't you love the fact that the Bible says, even in Matthew, uh, the seventh chapter and verse number 11, I got to wrap this up because my time has, has left me. But in Matthew 7 and 11, hey, 7 11, it says, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Now we know that in this Matthew account, he was actually talking about the Holy Spirit specifically. That's what he was specifically talking about or referring to. But nevertheless, he points out a very descriptive and specific perspective of God. And that, and that perspective is this, that if, that, that, that he is the father that knows how to give good things to those who ask. 
And, if, and by, by he didn't say he's the God. He says the father. So the father gives good things to his children. That's you. That's me. All right. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Okay. James 1 and 17. It, it reads, every good and perfect gift comes from above. It cometh down from who? The father. The father of lights. <laughs> Woo, we don't have time to, glory to God. We don't even have time to, to, to excavate this to the depth and the magnitude that I would like to because I don't want to belabor the time tonight. Hallelujah. But glory to God. It comes from the father, not from the God, not from the spirit. Here it is. God is reinforcing this perspective of his ability to father. I want to talk about the fatherness of God so that we are not a people who are in the abyss of fatherlessness. We have a father. I don't care what your relationship was or was not like with your biological father, whether you knew him or not, whether you had a healthy engagement or relationship with him or not. I'm here to tell you, if you are under the sound of my voice, the God of gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, he self-identifies as father. And he's saying unto us that this is what I want you to come into. I want you to come into the knowledge of me as father and all of the pro uh, provisional providential, progressive, productive aspects that that entails. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. In my conclusion, I'm going to wrap this up by going back to our principal scripture, which is Joshua chapter number 24, verse number 14 and 15. Now, therefore, Fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. When you really grasp and understand that God the Father wants to be a father to you, do you understand now how that can help you to, to, to serve him in sincerity and truth? When you understand that he's not trying to punish you, he's not trying to penalize you, but he wants to give you a paternal reality, a patriarchal uh, a reality, and he has the ability to, 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 to give you what you need and what you want. People of God, are you hearing me tonight? So our directive, our instruction, our mandate, our command tonight is to fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and truth, and put away, put away the gods which your fathers, your your, your forefathers. And, 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 and listen, that's not only the people that are biologically connected and related to you, but those who have sat in seats of authority and positions of power, your teachers, your, your the government, everybody who's ever been a, a, a man or woman of influence, power, authority, that you were, were, were required to be in submission to. Listen, you don't align yourself with them. You don't disrespect them. You okay? You 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 seek to you follow peace with all men. That's an aspect of holiness. Mm -hmm. So it's not about uh, checking anybody or you know uh, 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 rearing up in anybody's face. No 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 ma'am no sir. That's not what we're talking about. But we're talking about your inner disposition that that put away everything that was ever told you that does not line up with the scripture, with the unadulterated and in, infallible word of God, put it away, put it away, put it away. If it doesn't agree with God, put it away, put it away, disregard it, delete it, throw it away. It is not to be a part of your governance. Your government is the government that is on the shoulders of Jesus Christ and of the increase of his government and of his peace, there shall be no end. And so we put away those gods that our fathers have served on the other side, on the other side, on the other side, on the other side of the of the flood, on the other side. If it's not in the word, all of that, all of that rigmarole, I don't care. Let me tell you something. I don't care how articulate it was. I don't care how intelligent it was. I don't care how practical or pragmatic it was. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, put it away. 
I don't care if it works for them, for him, or for her. If they don't name the name Jesus, those are not the cues that we follow. And let me say this, and this is what I love about this particular passage of scripture, because in verse number 15, he, he helps us to, to understand how we are to exist in an environment, in a system, in a, in, a, in, a, in a culture that does not see things the way that we do. Our issue has never been to contend with them, to, to twist their arms or to, and to browbeat them into believing and into seeing how we see. No, you know, that really, what when you look at verse number 15, he says this, and if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, it, this, 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 this isn't what you want to do. Hey, you do you, because I'm going to do me. That's what Joshua is saying tonight. Hey, you do you, and I'm going to do me. He says in verse number 15, and if it seem evil for you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Exercise that option. Choose that. You do that. He said, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land he dwell, he says, but as for me, as for me, hey, do what you're going to do. Hey, you can get caught up in all of the energy and all of the erroneous dogma, doctrine, beliefs, philosophies, ideologies of the day. You can do that if you want to. All of this foolishness that we are living in today, that that, that, are, that things that are being legalized and things that are being uh, validated and supported. Hey, guess what? I'm not concerned with, I'm not consumed by a need to disrupt anybody's stuff. You do, you, you have added, but as for me, and my house. Hey, this is the season for the church, hey, for the household of faith, for the people of God to put your foot down in your house. It's about your house, that in this house, and we're not talking about brick and mortar. We're not talking about a, a physical structure. I'm talking about your house, you, your body. You are the temple of the living God. Hallelujah. You are a house. We've been likened unto a house. Listen, you as an individual, you are an entity. Listen, God wants to show himself strong on your behalf. God wants to move mightily in your life. And we are given this directive tonight to make the decision as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And as we serve God, he is going to very meticulously navigate us through all of what's going on, even all of what's to come. We, we had no idea in 2019 all of what 2020 was going to entail. But the fact that you are under the sound of my voice is proof positive that of all of the people who have expired up to this point, you are still here. And the fact that you are still here, even if you don't make it to 2021, you're here right now. And guess what? Because you belong to God, should any of us expire, whenever we expire, guess what? It was our appointed time, period. But while breath is in our body. And while we are yet on the top side of the earth, ours is to fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and truth. And that is how we are going to successfully navigate this unfamiliar territory that we are calling the twenties. And let me tell you something, people of God, I fear no evil. I, am, I, I fear no evil. And I mean that word fear in, in, in both contexts. I don't fear in the sense of I'm not giving evil respect. I'm not giving it regard. I'm not highly esteeming it. I'm not running away from it. I'm not, and I'm not afraid of it. Fear. I'm not fearful in that way. I fear no evil. We are fearing God and fear God only. So people of God, as I opened up with this uh, uh, time of sharing tonight, 
Our God is big, so strong and mighty. And his plan for you is victory. If this word has blessed you tonight, and if you so desire, you please feel free to sow into the watered garden the way to the way to do so. I put up on the screen. If that's not in your heart to do, don't get bound up. I'm not talking to you. But if it's your desire to do so, these are the ways in which to do it. Listen, I'm so excited, and I want to be clear about this as I as I prepare to leave you tonight. I am so excited about 2020. That wasn't a slip. I know I didn't say 2021. I said 2020. Today is the 30th. We still have a few more hours left in this year. And so there are some loose ends that we could can still tie up. There are some dots that we can still connect, you know, in this 2020 season. And in the fearing of the Lord, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So there is some intel, there is some knowledge, there is some knowing that God wants to usher you into, that you and I, we will personally be like the children of Issachar, who were men of understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. See, this is what, this is one of the 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 the, uh, the benefits of the wisdom of God of the fear of the Lord. All right, so I'm going to stop right there because I feel a whole. I, I can go. I can go. Hey, hey, glory to God. This is in my spirit tonight, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Hey, hallelujah. Father God, in Jesus' name, we honor you tonight. We thank you for being God. We thank you for being good. We thank you for being Savior. We thank you for being Lord. Father, beside you, there is no other. And personally, privately, as well as publicly, we fear you. We give you your props. We give you honor. We give you glory. We, 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 we boldly proclaim that all power belongs to you. Hallelujah. That there's no God greater than you. No, not one in the earth, above the earth, under the earth, in the entire universe. We declare that you are king of kings and lord of lords. And most importantly, and most personally, you, you are my God. You are my king. You are my master, my everything. You are my God. That's why I sing to you. Hallelujah. Hey, my God, my God, my God, that's who you are. All right, people of God, my time has been up, but I thank you for yours. God bless you. Hallelujah. May heaven smile upon you. <laughs> and as my mother would often say to us jokingly, and may Jesus take a liking to you. God bless you. God bless you. Until next time.